Subtle pride. When we are highly favored and blessed by God and others, we should beware of subtle pride. Here's Jean to explain. I believe that Joseph had subtle pride. It's understandable in view of what was happening to him, his father's favoritism, and God revealing to him some incredible truth through revelation. But that didn't excuse him from his arrogance or his, the subtle pride that took place in his life. In Genesis 37, 18 we read, They saw him, these brothers, once he came, they saw him in the distance. And before he had reached them, they plotted to kill him. This is anger. Did Jacob understand the intensity of their hatred? Well, if he was alive at all and aware, he had to. This wasn't something just quiet. These are 11 brothers. Uh, they have wives. They have family. This would be a very common conversation in relationship to what was going on. And Jacob was not dealing with reality. Verse 23 says, When Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped off his robe, the robe of many colors that he had on. And believe me, this was, as I said earlier, a robe of royalty. I don't know if you've had the chance of seeing Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Now, not everything that Weber captured in that musical is in touch with biblical truth. But when it came to that dream coat, he touched reality because it was a royal robe. It was a robe that was worn even by the firstborn and by the prince and uh, by the princess. I mean, this was an extravagant piece of, of uh, ornamental clothing and design. So they couldn't miss it. Jacob couldn't miss it. He designed it. Don't know whether he made it, but he certainly designed it. And he gave it to him because he loved Joseph, the son in his old age. He, he showed favoritism. And you know, I think that um, what we have here, number one, is we have Jacob's denial combined with Joseph's naivete, which was blended with pride. And uh, the dreams he had set the stage for all of that. And that's a fascinating thing because the dreams came from God. But that still, as I said, didn't excuse him from pride and the, the issues that he had as a young boy. Just imagine, 17 years old, you're getting all of these accolades, you're getting all of this attention, you know that you're the favorite. Is that going to affect you as a 17-year-old? As a young boy growing up in that kind of pagan environment, and he was ba virtually within a pagan environment, even with his own, within his own family. So, um, in terms of at least what they did, they certainly said they worshiped God, but as we said earlier, they had idols and all this stuff blended in with their, their family practices. So, the lesson, I think, for parents here is that, you know, our children need positive feedback. That's not the lesson. Don't give them positive feedback. That's not the lesson. We all need positive feedback. And we should not withhold praise. And that's another issue. You withhold praise from a child and you will create a thirst for praise. It's an interesting dynamic. If you say, I'm going to keep my child from becoming proud by withholding praise, you will create pride. You will create a desire for it. It's a dynamic you can see happening. So that's not the lesson. We all need positive feedback. But we need balance here in our lives in relationship to what God says should happen in our lives. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Now, we shouldn't think less of ourselves than we should think because we're created in the image of God. We are kings and priests and sons of the living God. And Jesus is not only our Savior, but our elder brother, as it were. We're not to think of ourselves more highly than we should think. Joseph was thinking more highly of himself than he ought to think. And certainly, Joseph or Jacob was thinking more highly of his son than he should think, at least in giving him positive feedback in the wrong way. Instead, Paul says, Think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one of us. 
we must all be aware of, of subtle pride. The principle that comes out of that from the New Testament is a servant's heart. In order to live in God's will, we're to humbly serve one another within the body of Jesus Christ. We are servants of one another. And being servants of one another, that eliminates pride. The great model there is Jesus Christ. Though he, as Paul said in Philippians, existed in the form of God, did not hold on to this position, laid it aside, but humbled himself and became even obedient to the death on the cross. So we have a great model in terms of humility. The question is, as parents, what are some of the practical steps we can take to build self-esteem in our children without causing them to be self-centered and prideful? And I think we need to look at those practical steps. Let me just give you one illustration which helps you at least understand how I tried to practice this. Didn't always practice it as I should. But remember, my, our son Kenton was out in the lawn. He must have been about eight years old. And he was playing football with his friends. And uh, I was watching out the front window of the house. And I noticed that Kenton always wanted to be the quarterback. He always wanted to run with the ball. And he was good at it. I mean, he could outplay any one of the boys on that Lawn. Now, that may be a prejudicial statement coming from his father. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, he was good. But he always wanted to hog the ball. He wanted to hold the ball. He wanted to control the ball. He wanted to do everything. And I remember, quietly, at the right moment, taking him aside and saying, Son, you know, you have a good talent there. You can handle the ball. You can pass it. You can run with it. But you know, you really need to share it with others. And he said, but Dad, I can do it better than they can. I said, I know you can. But you need to learn to share because they need to learn how to do things well as well. And he said, okay, Dad. Well, I was trying to balance building him up. You're good, but don't show off. Don't handle this yourself. Don't be selfish about it. And I remember when he was in college and he was on a racing team in Colorado. Uh, actually, yeah, he was in college. And uh, he was doing very well in, in downhill racing. And I remember he was going to go out and a group of kids were coming from the church and I said to him, I said, son, you're good at this. You're really good. And you're going to have an opportunity to be with those high school kids. I want you to go out there and just ski your heart out and do your very best. But I said, I don't think I used the word. In essence, I said, don't show off. Don't try to prove yourself. You don't have to prove anything. Just have a wonderful time. Do the best you can. But be an example to everybody on that slope. Can he work out that balance? Of course he can. But we need those instructions. And, and we need to take practical steps to be able to help our children to balance that. They need positive feedback, but they need to learn the humility of Jesus Christ and being a servant. And that is a very significant balance that we need to maintain.